This episode of OSU Fanboys is brought to you by Brondo, the thirst mutilator. Chocked vulgarly full of electrolytes. Brondo, <laughs> what plants crave. Right, well, we're, we're back. <laughs> we're back with our... Uh, Brondo. <laughs> our vulgarly, uh, vulgar display of product endorsement. Uh, so we were deciding about what comic book to shove in Mikey's face to make him read and introduce him to the wonderful world of graphic... Uh, Storytelling. If you had Watchmen what? here, you could shove that in his face. Uh, well, um, let's see what we have in front of us. How about... Planetary whatever, man. The Secret Invasion. It is the huge storyline going on right now in Marvel Comics. Um, wow, you couldn't possibly look more excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, really? On, this one? Bring something. But he's like... <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give him something that he hasn't had to read since read he was I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I will read it. I don't want to read it, like, now. It's, but. it's basically, <laughs> basically... So much pressure. Read it to all of us and the voices, please. <laughs> yes. yes, read a passage. Can I pee as it out? Show it to everybody. Basically, uh, an alien... Gr wow, I, this is going to sound really funny when you say it out loud. <laughs> an alien yeah. race of shapeshifters <laughs> has infiltrated every superhero team on Earth. Some of the Avengers are, are turning out to be... Scrolls, <laughs> which is what they're called, and um, they're trying to take over the Earth, and uh, there's no one to stop them because nobody trusts anyone. I want to know what it is in your guys' brain that clicks on and is like, this stuff is awesome, because my brain, I'm not, I'm not into it. Like the. Why do you buy so many shoes? Because shoes are hot. Give us this. <laughs> <laughs> no, Let I'm us just, have no, this. No, I'm being, I'm <laughs> genuinely being serious. Like, what is it about? Like, I, I mean, I kind of know why you dig it. I mean, you've told me, but Steve, like, seriously, like, what is it for you that you're so drawn to this and other people make what fun made of you for What this a priority, say, over losing your virginity? <laughs> <laughs> you you got to get that one in there. Bright colors and chicks in the spandex. Interesting. Little flashy Tom lights. Don't judge. <laughs> don't judge. <laughs> they don't judge me. Um, I, d I tried for a serious <laughs> panel. I did. I'm sorry. I got into I it because it. It, it gave me a focus uh, for art. I mean, I was an art major. Make and, like, at a young age, like, it gave me, like, before, I, I would draw, but I would just randomly draw stuff. And comics gave me something to focus it on, and that just sort of snowballed from there. So it was the artistic aspect of it, and then you found yourself enthralled with the rest of it. Well, I mean, besides the, the, the artistic. Well, when they're well written, they're just they're good stories. It's not any different. I agree, than there a, are some that not, are really good. It's not any different than a good, it's a genre story, just like. You know, like we were talking about Dark Knight. Dark Knight is a, a great movie, and it's one of the best of that genre, just like Godfather is one of the best of the gangster genre, and so forth. So, well, it's kind of an emerging genre. Well, now. it's a genre it's that a... people are starting to understand because you're getting directors who grew up reading comic books, where before you had mm -hmm. guys who had no exposure to comic books, they always saw them as a kid's thing. Now you're having guys that grew up on them, and embraced them as a young, and continue to read them, and love them, and that really influenced them. And I think that's why it's a growing genre. But... That, I mean, that's part of why I still read them, is like, anyone that knows me, I, I'm a bit of a storyteller, and, uh... <laughs> so now no. do, you, do you think this, like, this well, just... Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> so now, do you think that is, this is just, like, an easy pool to grab from now for directors? Is, is Hollywood getting lazy? Well, there's... There's, there's just so much backstory. That, and, and these characters have been around for so long, they've already been boiled down to their essence before. So it's real easy to then take that essence of the character and make a movie out of it, say, whereas, like, video game movies, you know, movies based on video games, they've never been boiled down to an essence. They have these great, elaborate backstories, but when you try to make a two-hour movie out of them that makes sense, they never do. It's They're horrible. But, like, you, you take these guys that, uh, that have now grown up, and there's this technology available, and they have nothing but the utmost respect, and, like, they go ahead and craft the things that, like, nobody really could before. Like, it basically... Like you said, like kids, child, children of the 80s. This is like uh, with Michael Bay. The, you know, he was a kid in the 80s. You know, he goes and makes Transformers in the movie, which would like, that would have never flown to like an 80s crowd, and even, even if they had the technology. Um, we've got G.I. Joe coming out. We've got a, a Thundercats movie. It's the same thing with like, it's nostalgia that, that, that is helping like uh, make this emerging genre. Like 
like Transformers and G.I. Joe will get lumped into comic book superhero movies. I think that it's a money thing. They, like one movie did really well, so the rest of them are like, hey, let's do it. And they just got lucky by finding people that were good at it. Yeah, because they can churn That's... out crap. Like they can take a great story and, and make it crap. But they, been a they've lot just of been ones. lucky. They've been lucky and they've found good writers and, well, the story's already they've there. They've been but largely they've... lucky. There's been a couple Yeah, bombs. but to translate it to, to film, you still need a good writer to make that transition. It, it, it just, it's like I said, you have a ton of people that grew up and that was one of the things that really influenced when they were young. And they, they, they really care about these characters and they do a good job. I mean, it's no different than... The only difference between it, like, you can make The Godfather in the 70s because there's not a ton of special effects in that. You couldn't have made these in the 70s and had them be any way, shape, or form believable. But with the computer technology now, you can. You see a lot of... good uh, directors, you're going to get good movies. You're going to get bad movies. You see a lot of big-name uh, directors and writers uh, begin, ooh, beginning on uh, uh, projects that they, that they feel so passionate about that they're more often today, they're leaving the project projects before they get off the ground like Joss Whedon was going to do Wonder Woman. Joss Whedon, the guy that did Buffy, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Firefly. Uh, he's just, guy's just amazing. But uh, the studio didn't want to do what he wanted to do, so he bows out. Uh, same thing happened with The Flash. The guy that, uh, Goyer, that did Batman, Batman Begins, wanted to do like this whole leg, the, the Flash, you know, the fastest man alive. He want, they wanted to do like a legacy thing where like there's the Flash and a kid sidekick. Come on. <laughs> sidekick, kid, sidekick, uh, kid Flash, and then Flash and dies, the and the kid Flash becomes like becomes the new Flash. And the studio didn't want to do it and have the hero die, and that thought people would be confusing. And it's like that would be awesome. We've never seen that before. Like it's it as long as like the, these creators like hold on to the uh, what they want to do. Like the, eventually the the studios will break down, and we'll we'll keep seeing uh, good movies because. Like any trend like this is got is gonna have to end. And they well, Goyer didn't have enough cachet to get that pushed through. It's not like yeah. Snyder who made a huge hit at three hundred and then was able to basically go to a studio and like after Paul Greengrass who did the last two Born movies tried to do Watchmen and a bunch of other. I mean, multiple big name directors tried to do them and couldn't do it. And then Snyder because three hundred was such a huge hit, like was able to come in and be like, I'm gonna do Watchmen. This is how I'm gonna do Watchmen. 300 was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. It was so Although, cool, what was man. up with that goat? 300. Uh, uh, you know, the, goat, the goat that was like... You didn't feel it? You know it? what I'm talking about? Like the celebration? Well, you know what I liked like about it was military. in the original comic, you know, like, the guys walked around. They didn't have loincloths. They just kind of walked around. Yeah, I don't think you could do that on... Uh, well, I'm just, just glad they didn't. Yeah, so, you know. I don't think that would have... <laughs> yes, yeah, it's Snyder, man. He, I mean... But that's what I'm saying. He had enough cachet to do it. Goyer has been a writer and, and has wonder. You know, he directed the third Blade, and it was okay. And so he didn't have the cachet to pull the Flash through. If someone else came in with enough cachet and said, "I want to do this," we didn't still didn't have enough cachet in the movie industry. He's got that uh, show coming out uh, in January or February, The Dollhouse, which uh, everyone just kind of expects to uh, go the same way as Firefly, which sucks because Firefly was awesome. It's just no, I think Doll. I mean, Fox. I think is pushing. I think they. Realize the mistake they made with Firefly. I think they're pushing Dollhouse pretty. They put it at a, a Friday night, like nine o'clock slot. Did they? Yeah, like that's the kiss of death. Yeah. Like, like oh, well, Only we already you bought guys this. Are home we'll just... on Friday at nine. No, I'm working. Thank you. <laughs> I kidding. drive a pedicab. I'm kidding. Friday nights at nine, through the short north. We work for tips. Rides are free. Bring, bring. See what I did? See what I did there? All right, uh, what else we got? What are, uh, no, I have a huge question. Let's hear it. Why do you guys have to dress up at the movies? I don't what? dress up at the I movies. I can honestly say you have I not only... dressed up at the movie, but I'm talking about your group of people. Why do you guys feel... I didn't go see Sex in the City in, like, my Manolos. No, and... no, hey, no, I did What's see a, a what bunch of girls dress up for Sex in the what City. What the hell is I can Manolo? Honest... It's, a, it's a shoe. It's a shoe. See shoes. I, shoes. I just, shoes. that's where I went with it. I honestly, I did not see Sex in the City. I think I'm we should do another girl. one of these shows about shoes. All right, well. No, I'm serious. I'll talk about like, the three pair I have. Mikey? Our, our producer's giving us the wrap it up. You guys are making us sick. Uh, <laughs> so next time on OSU Fanboys, we'll be talking about shoes. <laughs> <laughs> see you then.
Oh.